You know, all of us in life make decisions, sometimes for the better and sometimes for the worse. I take this family I'm about to meet. 14 years ago, they started off with two pet alpacas. Today, there are over 70 alpacas here and a thriving business to boot. Let's go and meet two wonderful people, Angela and Matthew. They and their herd can be found at Black Wattle Alpaca Farm, 25 minutes from Canberra at Murrum Bateman. Good morning, ladies. How are you all? You're, doing, you're having a bit of a chew, are you? How are you guys? Bit hey, nippy Harry. this morning, that wind's <laughs> coming right out of Antarctica. Good to sure see you is. both. Good morning. Right, you're working hard out here. I Always. love all the little faces. This is our maternity herd. So this is basically our, our animals that we've got uh, here due to give birth. So I read that they normally give birth during the day. Is there a reason for that? They give birth during the day usually between 10 and 3, and it's, it's uh, herd protection because the predators in Australia and as well as in native Peru and Chile where they come from, the prey animals prey at night. You sort of had a hard time, didn't you? I mean, the drought hit. Well, tell me, what was it like? Uh, we had nothing. We were on dirt. So there was no grass, um, there was not even any weeds. Our dam was nearly empty because um, it hadn't rained, um, but there was not a blade of grass to be seen. But you were ingenious. You came up with a great idea. We did. We opened our farm for agritourism. People come to the farm for um, a tour and they walk the llamas and the alpacas, they get to hand feed them, it's educational, and that, that income helped pay for the food. And that got you through the drought? It did. How did you get about getting them used to, uh, you know, being led around? Yeah, we do a lot of uh, uh, halter training, Dr Harry, and yeah. as a result, uh, we spent a bit of time in their fawn of uh, uh, months yeah. and learning them how to walk on a lead. Basically, the alpaca is there for fleece, whereas the llama is a much larger animal and was used for, as a beast of burden. Yeah, back in Chile and Peru, it's used to uh, cart supplies and grain exactly. and things like that. Exactly. Whereas in here in Australia, very similar to the sheep, the alpaca is used for their fibre and fleece. This is Atlantis. He's one of our uh, adult males yep. and uh, he has a beautiful fleece, so he's a, he's a nice boy. How old is he? He's just uh, three years now. I know. Yeah. Now, I want you to look at their feet because I find them fascinating. You can see big toes out the front, but behind that big toe is a really soft pad. They're a soft padded animal and they're very uh, low impact on the environment. Can I have a go? For sure. There you Any go. special techniques here? Uh, no, just hold it close and uh, just he'll, he'll lead off, just like walking a dog. OK. You ready to go? Oh, no, I'm sorry. OK, let's go. A command at all? No, just a light pulse. OK, let's go. And it'll keep on coming along. Let's yep. go. The farm was shut down initially when COVID first was a problem. People couldn't come? Yeah, people people couldn't come. And then, because um, we also run a yarn business, and I'll pack a hand-dyed yarn business. Everyone was at home crafting, so even though the farm was shut down for tours, um, people were still buying, because we could post. And once again, I read that it's very hands-on, so I'm dying to have a look at dying. <laughs> <laughs> Not that, that type of dying. Pull that out of nowhere, I did. Pull that out of nowhere. <laughs> Angela, can I just use one word? Yes. I'm looking at that table and I'm going, wow. The colours are stunning. So how did you arrive at this? We dye them in our dye studio, which is um, beside us yes. here. We can look at that? We can. Right. I can yeah. show you. You yeah. can even have a go at dyeing some yarn. Um, I know. <laughs> it's all I'm exciting. Like a, I'm like a kid. Yeah. <laughs> this is stuff Ed gets to do, you know, and now he's getting to do it. Surprise in store. We've mixed up some colours. Yeah. Um, and these just get poured on. Willy nilly. Willy nilly, wherever you choose Whatever to put it. Whatever I like. It. I like stripes. Now, you were teaching me, right? Do you get to teach people how to do this stuff? I do. We run uh, workshops here. Yeah. Um, I teach dyeing. I run probably five or six dye um, sessions, what we're doing now, yeah. a, a year. 
can use tongs or spoon. I, I like a spoon. Oh, yeah, um, okay. well, I like but, a spoon. You know, <laughs> and then I just... Um, you're the teacher. I just move it, move it around so the colours will actually blend. And where that yellow and pink will blend, you'll get, like, a pretty coral colour. This is so much better than mine. Oh, it's because I've done it a few times. Yeah, you keep spooning <laughs> stuff over it like we're in a Chinese meal, you know? You can pick up some of the purple. Yeah, and don't put it over. Oh, put it over your pink no, if you want. No, ruin the pink. <laughs> the next process is to add heat. How long? For about we do 20 it? minutes. OK. And that sets the colour. We then rinse it. Yeah, we rinse it and then we spin it in the washing machine uh, to get as much water out as possible and then okay. it goes outside to dry. That's oh, so where it hangs out there when it's dry. Yeah. And then someone buys it and makes beautiful garments. This is it here. This is my yarn? Yeah. Wow. Look at you. Wow. <laughs> I thought I just made a mess. <laughs> it's true Aussie spirit, isn't it? True Aussie spirit. Battling against all odds and coming out on top. So thanks for having me. It's been a great day. Be good. Thanks, Harry. Stay safe. Thank you. <laughs>